So what is up guys? Today is a beautiful day, actually night, considering that it is almost 1 a.m. Trying to get this video out for you guys. So today we're gonna be talking about basics, the beginnings, the early stages of learning video editing. I've been editing for a little over two years now, so I have a little experience in the field. Now guys, I'm gonna teach you exactly what I wish I had on my first day of learning video editing, just basic stuff. You know, sometimes stuff can get tedious. You're gonna have to look up specific things that you wanna do. And sometimes you can't find those specific things. You're gonna have to mess around with it, try to figure it out. Oh guys, I forgot to mention, I have a completely free Discord. It's called Editing Sauce. Now this is for beginners or completely advanced people. I have people in there that are better at editing than me personally. This server is completely free. Editing Sauce, guys, you need to join up now. There are over 200 members in this server. You guys don't wanna miss out on this opportunity because in the future, I may make it pay. But for now, it is completely free. So why would you not join it up? The first link in the description, you can ask anything you need help question wise. I'll answer, someone else will answer. It's a no brainer. Why would you not join it? Just go ahead and join it. Over 200 members. Anyways, we're gonna get straight into this video. I'm gonna head into DaVinci Resolve right now. Okay, so now right here we have DaVinci Resolve open. So if you are a complete beginner and never have done anything, this is what you're gonna first start off. You're gonna first start off and go to start a new project. Now it's gonna load up what you wanna name your project don't think about this too much. You know, sometimes you're gonna be creating so much projects that you're just gonna start naming it random stuff like this, right? So I'm gonna name it DaVinci. We're gonna hit enter. This is going to open up a new project file. As you can see down here, we're stuck in the cut mode. So what you're gonna wanna do is navigate over to the edit page. This is where you'll be doing majority of the work. So the first thing you wanna do is get the clip that you are trying to edit. So how can you import your video? Now there's a few ways you can do this. So with DaVinci Resolve minimized, you're gonna go to your clip that you wanna find. You're basically going to drag it into this master pool area. It's gonna ask you to change the frame rate. You're just gonna press change, okay? This is gonna add your footage. Now there's another way you can do this. You're gonna go under file, you're gonna go import, and you're gonna go media. This will be able to access to all of your files on your computers. And if you think this way is more simple, so say I just wanna add this photo, now it's added in there. So there's a few different ways. I personally like to just open up my Finder app and just kinda of drag it in there. It makes my life 10 times easier so I don't have to go up here to file and then come all the way down here and do all that work, right? Now you wanna know what you need to do with this clip, right? The very first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the clip that I personally want to add to my timeline and we're just gonna drag it down on our timeline. Now, once you see that it's it's dragged there, you're just gonna let go, okay? Now, to avoid dead space, you can kinda just drag this to the front. So now, as you can see, we have our media in our edit page. So the first thing that you may wanna do is just cut your clip up. So there's two ways you can do this. You can come to the cut page, which is specifically made for cutting up your, your footage. So we're gonna go to the cut page, and as you can see, it has a waveform here on the bottom, okay? So this is important because this is when you'll know where to cut your videos. So right here, I see that there's some noise, so I'm gonna cut it here, okay? And if you delete it, it'll automatically go back. Now you're wondering, how did I cut? So we're gonna head back over to the edit page and I'm gonna teach you guys that right now. So as you can see here, there is a blade edit mode tool. So when you click this, you're able to cut it up, right? then you're supposed to click this selection mode back to where you can clip, select your clips. But we all know that that is a waste of time. Essentially what you wanna do your very first time you're gonna edit is you wanna set key binds to make sure that you're maximizing your time. So in order to find where the key binds are, it's very simple. If you're on Mac or PC, this is how you do it. What you're gonna do if your DaVinci Resolve minimized, by minimizing, you just hit this green arrow right here. You see this big DaVinci Resolve up here. You're just gonna click DaVinci Resolve and you can see keyboard customization. We're gonna click on that. Now, this may look way more confusing than it actually is, but I promise you, this is where you need to start first things first. So we're gonna need to select something that is going to split the clip. So this can be all up to you. I'm just gonna let you know what I personally did. You can go with whatever what you feel is comfortable, but really this is all we need to set for keybind wise, just for now to keep things simple, because in the future you'll be able to set other keybinds, but for now all you'll need to use is the split clip. They're gonna come under application. You can find that, it's the second thing. You're gonna come down to timeline, and you should be right here, you should scroll all the way down to where you get to the S's on the right side. You're gonna see split clip. You're gonna click in here and you're gonna choose whichever keybind you want. I would suggest making it one thing and one, one keybind only. 
So for me, as you can see here, I have this slash. If you look up here, you can see where it is on my keyboard. It's right next to my backspace. You already know why, you know? I can hit this and then I'm able to hit the backspace. Guys, this is completely up to you. You could do a number if you want. You could do shift slash, you could do this slash, you could do a comma, whatever you want it to be, totally up to you. But once you have that, make sure you hit save or else it will not save, obviously. So after we did that, we're gonna head back into the edit page. In the edit page, as you can see, we were talking about waveforms. Like I said, in order to split this clip up, this is the easiest way for just beginners. So I saw that I messed up, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit where I wanted my split clip to happen. Boom, just like that, split the clip. That's why it's so important, because you do not wanna be continuously going up and pressing the razor blade button and manually selecting it. Trust me, the, the split clip is really a big game changer. So then you'll move forward to where you think that the video needs to begin. There. Here's the B &B we are chilling at right now. And you're gonna hit split again. Now, this is what's great about the edit page mode, because now with this clip that I want gone, all you do is hit delete and it automatically goes back to normal. So now you can get a general basis of what you want your clip to be clipped up like. This is the very basics. Um, this is something I highly suggest that all of you learn before you get into anything else. So once you guys have your clip split up, however you want it to be split up, now you can head back to the edit page. Now, like I said, guys, this will be where everything you're gonna be learning today, and we're gonna go over every key feature that you need to know about in DaVinci Resolve. So, first things first, if you navigate over here to the media pool, this is where you'll select on and off your media pool. This will allow you to see everything that you applied into your timeline. Now, I don't suggest you guys get into effects just yet, but this is how you bring up your effects tab. Obviously, right next to media pool, this is how you bring it up. This will be a game changer. You guys will be using this a lot in the future once you guys learn and get more advanced into video editing. So I'm gonna to to tell you what all these buttons mean. This slider right here makes your media bigger, as you can see, just so if you really want to see what video you're looking at, then you're able to do that. But if you're someone like me and just don't, don't really need it that big, you can kind of already see it right here. It kind of just saves space. And especially if you're editing a lot of different videos, this is, comes in handy for zooming it all the way out so that you don't have to keep scrolling down like that. Now this button right here will allow you to see your whole timeline. It'll actually minimize this and bring everything up here so that you're able to get a whole length of timeline. Now if not, then you can just have that selected and you can have this dead space. But if you're someone like me and you're using effects all the time, then I like to keep my effects all on the whole time. But for now, say we just wanna use our whole timeline, that's totally fine. We're able to see more we're able to get a better view of our timeline. So a few buttons that you need to know. So this clip right here is basically unlinking and linking. So it's called snapping and it's in. So if you want to turn it on and off, you're going to hit in on your keyboard. But essentially, I'll explain what it does. Right now with it on, if you see I come up to my clip, it snaps on just like that, as you saw right there. But if we were to turn it off, it wouldn't snap. As you can see, it's not snapping. So for beginners, I would recommend keeping this selected so that it will just auto snap on to that clip, makes your life 10 times easier. Next thing is this link button. If you unlink this, your clips will not be matched together. Always keep this on. There is no use for this really just yet for anyone. So keep link selection on. Okay, now this is a big one. This is how you zoom in and out your timeline. So you can either use these minus arrows and these plus arrows to zoom in on your timeline, which is what I still use. So if you wanna use that, that's totally fine. And I still use this to this day, I still use this feature. So I still think this feature is great, but you know, I also see people using the slider to go, go in and out. You know, it's totally up to what you wanna do. So then if you look to the left of this slider, this is basically other selections that you can use to see the timeline. This won't affect anything except for how you see your timeline. So full extend zoom, this will just make sure you see your whole timeline. This will make sure you see one clip of your timeline. This will make it, make it, make it zoom out a little bit more. So really all you wanna do is just kinda mess with these. Um, I wouldn't really mess with these any, any really. Now, to the right, we have the inspector tab. Now, if you don't see it, you're gonna click on inspector tab right here. This is a big one. You're gonna always want this open. Oh, we're just gonna go over some basics. So as you can see here in the zoom, obviously, if you have a clip selected and you're over it, you could zoom in on your subject. 
Now, say you didn't like that selection, this reset button here all the way to the right will re restart everything that you ever did to the file under the inspector tab. Say you want to move it to the left and right, you're going to use position X. Now say you want to use position up and down, you're going to use position Y. To rotate your image, this is pretty simple, you can see right here, rotate, there you go, just like that. This will come in handy if you're using short form content and your camera doesn't automatically know that you're shooting horizontal. Now those are the basics that you need to know. There's nothing really else you need to know under, under this transform, so we're just going to minimize that because we don't need to see that anymore. So cropping is pretty simple, as you can see, left crops, right crops, top, and bottom. Pretty simple stuff. Now, this is just a beginner tip for anyone out there who wants to, to, to know how to do a zoom and doesn't know how to animate. You just kind of want it to zoom in. So this right here is called dynamic zoom. So for dynamic zoom, we're going to do it using this example as a picture. So say you had a still video, kind of like what I'm doing right now, and you were to hit dynamic zoom. As you can see, it zooms out automatically for you. But say you wanted it to zoom in. All you were needing to do is hit the swap button. Now you have an animated zoom in button and you didn't have to mess with any keyframes. So that is honestly all you guys need to know for the inspector tab so far, because if you guys are just clipping up a clip, you don't really need to know anything in the inspector tab except for zooming in and zooming out in a small animation keyframe. So now I'm gonna teach you some basic more buttons. Right here, this is called a audio track. We're just gonna import this audio clip, and as you can see, if I hit solo, and I have a whole bunch of clips on my, on my audio timeline, it will only play this audio right here. But say I don't want that clip, I wanna mute that clip. Instead of deleting it, you can just simply hit this mute track clip. And next thing you know, your track is muted. So now, guys, as we said before, under the effects panel, to click that on, remember you just hit the effects button. We're gonna teach you guys how to make a simple, clean, sleek title. So under the titles, you're going to wanna select text plus. You never wanna use just regular text, trust me. So under this, we're just gonna name it test text. So I don't personally like the basic text font that it gives me, so I'll just scroll through and find a text that I personally like. And if you guys wanna download fonts, there are millions of free fonts out there. You could just go there, browse any font that you want, and then you're able to import that into Vinci Resolve. So now I have this text that I really like. So say I wanna size it up. Under here in the Inspector tab, you make sure this is selected and under the Text button right here, we're simply just going to size this up. Super simple and easy. Now say you want it to the top. Under layout, all you have to do is come under the Y center and just simply move it up top. And the same thing goes for bottom. You're just gonna move it to the bottom. But say we want it to the left, you move it to the left with the X center. But say we want it rotation. Under rotation and under the Z, simply just gonna turn it whichever way you want. So say you want it just like that, Boom, now you have a rotation text text. Say you wanna spice your text up a little more. Under shading, you're gonna come under shading elements right here. You're gonna select an element. You're gonna to come to element number two. It'll actually have it already keyed out for you. So you're gonna hit enable. This is going to add a red outline. Now me personally, I don't want the red outline. So I'm simply just gonna come under the color and change it to black to make it a clean text effect but it's not really noticeable. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna come under properties and turn the thickness all the way up. Now, as you can see, we already have a juicier looking text effect. Say I don't want it that bold. I want the text to be lighter, simple. Under opacity and the properties, you just turn the opacity down. So now it has a shadow effect to it. But say I want my text hollow, simple. All you're gonna do is come over to element number one and you're just gonna come under properties again and under appearance, you're gonna hit this text outline. Next thing you know, now you have a text outline with a shadow behind it with this cool looking effect. So now I'm gonna teach you guys the most basic animation that you guys will learn. This is sort of advanced, but very easily. If you guys follow along, it's super simple. So under our text and remember we're in the inspector tab, we're gonna come under the text over here, right here. And under layout, we're actually going to come under this Y center. We're gonna essentially bring it all the way down. Now, don't worry, this didn't go anywhere. All we're gonna do is come under this diamond shape looking thing. This is called a keyframe. You're gonna keyframe it, bring it to here, and essentially just bring it back up. 
Now let go and magic is done. Now you have a text effect that animates up. But now I want to spice it up a little bit. I kind of want to add a transition. What do I need to do, Ryan? Simple. Under the effects tab to the top left up here, you're going to come under video transitions. Now there are millions of different things you can do. You could do this blur transition. And by previewing, all you have to do is hover your mouse over it and kind of just drag it through like how I'm doing right now. It'll give you a preview of what it looks like. Right here, I'm just seeing exactly what I do want. So I'm gonna scroll through and see exactly what I want. So I kinda of like this circle spin. So what you're gonna do is essentially add it to your text. You wanna add it to the very top layer, shorten it up a little bit, and then play it back. And next thing you know, now you have an effect transition that goes into your animation with your text that's also animating up, with your, vid your picture that's also animating up. Now guys, make sure you put that effect on both of these two clips right here, super simple, you just drag it like this, and then also say I want it at the end, we're just gonna shorten that up there, and it'll kinda just give it an effect away. So now we're gonna talk about exporting, cause this is probably the one of the last things that you're gonna do. To export your video is so simple, guys. You, you're gonna come under this rocket ship all the way to the bottom right. You're gonna hit the rocket ship and let it load. It may take a few seconds. So once you see that it's loading, under file name, we're just gonna highlight this, and name it test text. Now, you need to add a location to this. So under location, you're gonna hit browse, and I'm just gonna do it to my desktop. We're gonna hit save. So under format, we're just gonna come under here and hit MP4 for the best quality. Now, once you are done, this is a key feature that you cannot forget. You're gonna hit add to render queue down in the bottom right. Now you think you're done, but you're not. You have to come all the way to the top right where you're under your render queues, and you're gonna render it all, and now, once your project is done rendering, it should be in your desktop. So guys, that will conclude this video. Let me know if you guys would like a more in-depth and a more advanced tutorial down in the comments below. And also leave a like and subscribe so that I can continue to post these videos and help you guys, aspiring editors. Um, and also don't forget to join the free Discord down below. There are over 200 people in the community right now. Let's get that to over a thousand. Guys, there's so many perks to being in this community. It's one, it's completely free. And two, there are people helping you in there every step throughout the day. If you post a question in there, it's very beginner friendly. You can go in there, make your own account, whatever. Type any questions you have. There's so many tabs in there. There's help tabs, rating your edits tabs, whatever you want. It's a community full of editors like-minded like me and you. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.